Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question I'm answering is, what's in the box in regards to this? This is Draconis Invasion, the deck building game. Horrific monstrosities, forbidden magic, and a kingdom under siege. A strange evil has appeared out of the eastern borders of your kingdom. You are a noble hero charged by the king to protect the realm and crush the dark forces of Draconis. Draconis Invasion is a fast-paced strategic card game where you race to gain gold, recruit armies, and summon enough strength to defeat the terrible creatures that threaten your world. Although you and your fellow heroes fight a common enemy when the dust settles and the battle is over, only one of you will stand triumphant as the king's greatest champion. So it sounds like a bit of Marvel Legendary there with the, the cooperative and competitive nature mixed together. So I have not played this game. I do have to thank Keji Inc. for sending me a review copy of this to check out, as well as one of the expansions, which we'll be unboxing in a separate video. I am going to take a look at this for the first time. So let me just crack the shrink on this and let's take a look inside the box. So here you have the box for Draconis Invasion from Keji Inc. It's my first time cracking this open. Uh, it's a deck building game. I have a feeling we're going to find cards and lots of cards. What's surprising is how tall this box is. So that's something I'll show. Look at the depth of this box. Like That is an unusual depth for a box. And I don't see a great reason why. Like the card, eh, I guess that's the size of a deck with some space. Fair enough. So... What do we have? We have we have a bunch of troughs and and decks of cards. Kind of what I expected to find in here. Um, foamy bits to, to help separate things. We got a D6. It's dark blue with some light blue letters on it. Um, I dig the font. Just I don't know. It's it's got lots of serifs. Oh, there's some like evil symbol on one side. So here we have the evil symbol on the one side of the die for the six. It's got like a flaming blue skull. So we have a cool D6. Other than that, um, what do we have up here? This is going to be these. Oh, there's a bag. I have no clue. There is a black cloth bag. We'll put the die in there for now. I don't know. Not sure what that's for. We have the rules in three different languages. Fair enough. Uh, looks like French, German, and English. Rules are an odd shape. Like, I just don't understand with a box this big why you couldn't give me a bigger rule book. Odd shape, rule book. Uh, there's a QR code, nice touch. Uh, the rules are nice and, like, uh, the, the font's not too small. Some really wicked looking artwork here. Um, there's an introduction, components. That's going to take up some table space. There's a, here's a sample board setup for the game. You've got player setup. Looks clear enough. I just find this an odd choice. Like, I wonder if they almost planned it to be in a different style box originally. Chapter 3, terminology and icons, and then card types. Terror and event. So I think we're only looking at six pages of rules. Yeah, and then we have a bunch of like summary and reference for all the cards. Doesn't look bad. Um, battle stages. I'm not even sure what that means. Battle stage six, facing fear. So it looks like some set scenarios. Um, <laughs> cute. It says FAQ, but it's just a link to a web page. Uh, and then some background. So only six pages of rules. The different invaders. Cool. A little confused by the size of this, but looks easy enough to learn. So we do have a total of four chunks of foam, and then lots and lots of cards. So I didn't see anything that told me how to sort these, so we're just going to start taking them all out. So far they all have the same backs. Nothing else in here? No, no, nothing there. How about down here? Okay, we have more cards. It's a lot of cards. We have square cards and more cards. Oh, like longer than normal cards. Online rules. So there's a scan, another online rules. Okay, so we're going to move this aside for now. So look at all these. It's a lot of cards. It's a deck builder. Kind of makes sense. So these are unique. These are, these are taller than the other ones. So these say terror on them. So I'm going to crack this open first. Um... They're in resealable bags, but I think I'm going to skip this. I now more understand the, yeah, the need for the tall box. 
So these tarot cards are taller significantly than a standard card. So, oh, these are dividers. All right, makes sense. <laughs> so we have a pack of dividers, something you always want when doing a collectible card game. Stroke Titan, Betrayal, Obsidian Tower. Cool. I am digging the artwork a lot. Like, check out that werebear. That's really neat looking. Um, so dividers. Makes sense. That's a really big golem. Treasure. All right, dividers. Fair. We're going to take these dividers and put them right in the middle here. And I'm going to throw a box. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just shoving my divide those up here. So then let's take a look at the square cards. Looks like there's a reference cards. So yeah, we have we have the starting threat level used for player setup. Uh, with a quick play guide on the back. Then we have a number of turn overviews, which the game is broken into an A, B, C, D, E. A always happens, and then you choose one of B, C, D, E. And on the back is a terminology, so that's cool. Nice reference cards. Well, these... So, bringing the box back over here. These don't fit... Like, the square cards don't fit in the box. Like, yes, they'll fit sideways, but that's an odd choice. Like, to, to have a box insert but not have a way to fit these is a little odd. So, square cards, I guess, are going to go on their side. Interesting choice. Uh, then we have two different levels of bad guys to fight. So, you've got the weaker bad guys and the tougher bad guys. So, here's an example of Skeletal Soldier. It takes 10 strength to defeat. It gives you one victory point at the end and has some abilities when it's revealed. Uh, there are two or four of those. So the distribution of this deck is going to be multiple different types. So then we have four Succubus. Um, not very attractive for a Succubus. Uh, then we have Reapers. Again, there's four. So it looks like there's four of each of these bad guys. That's a badass looking thing. Then we have four Hellhounds. So that's it for the, the bad guys. Not a lot of differentiation there for such a large deck. Then we've got the tough bad guys. We've got an orc chief. Oh, see, these are all unique. So that's cool. Oh, they're not all unique. There's some of them are unique. So we have an orc chief. That's a badass looking orc. The skull lord. The lich king. And so on. I'm not going to show all these off. We do have multiple Necromancers, multiple Wyverns, multiple Baylors. So there's some uniques in here as well as some duplicates. So these are the baddies you're trying to take out. Which again, no real way to put them in the box in a happy fashion. Which is just, to me, very strange. Alright, I don't know what these are. So these look different from the rest. All the rest of these have the same backs. So going with this pack next because I don't know what it is. Oh, something stuck. So we have, oh, we're mixed here. So some of those, some of those. So I think we're looking at event cards. Hopefully I'm supposed to mix these. <laughs> Not keep them separate. So yes, one of the end conditions of the game is you get to the end of the event deck, and this will be the retreat card at the bottom to kind of scare you into running away, I guess, final event. Then we do have a bunch of events here, uh, like the demon spell. Players with the most kills must place three cards from their hand on top of their deck. So we have a number of event cards. These are um, landscape instead of... Portrait, oh, we have some repeats here too. So like Demon Spell, I have multiple times in here. Dark Rising, multiple times. Chaos, multiple times. Horror, Chaos, Horror, Demon Splint. So again, there's not a lot of variety here. 
Artwork's cool though. Then these ones are not events. Um, from what I understand, these are campaigns you can go on, and if you are able to take them, you get the victory points required. So they have a cost at the bottom, and this one be worth four victory points at the end. So this is Skeletal Skull Soldier times two, Reaper times two, which is worth two victory points, Necromancer times one, and so on, a whole deck of these with this kind of sepia tone color. Now these also are not normal card size. So just to kind of compare, here, I should open one of these so then you can tell. So to compare it, you can see the difference in the size of the cards. So these are like skinnier. Uh, making me glad I don't sleep my cards. That's what I got to say about that. So we are going to toss these in here. Again, I haven't done anything with the dividers. I'm just kind of tossing stuff randomly in the box. So that's somewhat organized. So, a ton of these Draconis cards. This is your whole deck building. So, we're out. So, we're going to jump over here to this invasion deck first. So, what do we have for here? So, we have a link to the online rules. Always appreciated. Okay, I, I don't understand what these are, but these look like more things to defeat and get. They are all dark colored. These are the invasion. Some of these are action cards. Some say defend. Some say action. So, oh, we have two different decks. So these would be the bad guys invading, I would assume. And they probably do horrible things. So here's an example of one of the cards. Enchantment action. Gives you an extra action. But it looks like it costs 80 coins to buy. Whereas this one is Courage. Which is an action. Gives you a bunch of money to spend. Gives you an extra A action. An extra B action. Gives you 110 coins and so on. Uh, those are some of the light colored ones. Some of the dark colored ones. Look similar. So these have like attacks on them, like slashes on them. So this golem, I noticed the same monster that was in the deck. So these are probably ones you can fight as opposed to ones that you hire. I'm not sure. So we're going to throw this into the box over here. Then we're going to break apart all these decks. So what we have here is the wealth and treasure cards. So wealth cards, treasure cards, this is the money in the game that you're going to collect to buy stuff. Interesting thing in this one is all the denominations are in tens. So if you have wealth, it's worth 10 gold. Or you could have a fortune, which is worth 30 gold. Now the cost to buy this is in the bottom corner. So it costs 60 to be able to buy a fortune to have later. So think of the coins. What's cute, if you notice, is the number of coins on each of these is growing. So wealth has less coins than treasure, which has less coins than fortune. So here's all your money cards. Now these look like they're mixed. So I have defenders, I have actions, I have more defenders, I have more actions, and so on. So again, the this card has an attack of 30. It generates 60 coins of income and costs 60 to buy and has a special ability. This one has its own thing and so on. So these are the cards you're going to be able to buy to build your deck to fight the bad guys. You've got a Dread Knight. Again, I really do dig the artwork on this game. Art's really nice. Uh, definitely emphasizes the artwork. There's not a lot on the cards. So there are a ton of these, obviously. Like, look how thick this deck is. There are some repeats, like Casualty of War. I see multiples of Dawn of Hope. I only see one. So it's a mix. I don't see anything on the cards that indicates how many of each deck are in here. So then we have a bunch more sorceress, imperial guards, werebears, shamans. These are all defenders. Defender cards. A ton of defender cards. These are all defender cards. So these are all heroes you can probably hire. Again, I dig the artwork a lot. Artwork's really nice. Then we have some action cards, it looks like. No, again, a mix. 
So we have, no, oh, these are still on the back. So we have action cards, we have terror cards, which I know have to go separate, more wealth cards, action cards, more terror cards, more wealth cards. I know terror is a big part of this game and earning terror is a big part of the game. Having not played it, I don't know the impact. What I'm not seeing is like the starter decks. I thought that might be what these are, but I'm not seeing the starter characters. So more cards, it's a deck builder. What do you expect? So here's everything kind of put back into the box as best I could um, without the dividers. Once I use the dividers, it'll be better. Biggest disappointment though, are these square cards that there's no, like they don't fit sideways. You have to kind of, so what I did was shove this here and this here, but even doing this, I'm ending up with um, the wrong things in the wrong place. So I'm trying to figure out, see, we're making a mess. Now, if I take all of these and put them at this end, will it work? It doesn't feel like that's too big to fit up there. So, yeah, and the baggie, which I honestly not sure what the baggie's for. I'll have to read the rules. Odd choice and rule book size. Definitely a little unique. Looking forward to trying this, though. I do like deck builders. Hoping to get to play this with my co-host, Sean. He's the big deck building fan out of the two of us. There you have... Draconis Invasion, the deck building game. So there you have it, what you get in the box for Draconis Invasion, the deck building game uh, from Keji Inc. This one's an older one, came out in 2016. Seems to be based a lot on Dominion where you're going to use money cards to buy heroes. The difference is you're going to use those to beat up enemies. So there's a unique terror system using the die where once the terror level gets so high, bad things happen to you. That's about all I know about the game. I gotta say, I really dig the artwork, ranging from this awesome box cover to the actual artwork I saw on the cards in this box unboxing. Um, my only complaints are um, an odd choice of box insert shape, especially when there are square cards and there was no specific way to put the square cards away. Other than that, the cards look great. The texture is good on them. They have a, a finish on them that's nice, um, nice to the touch. The insert looks like it will also fit sleeves if you do choose to sleeve your cards. Now note if that is something you do want to do, the cards are various sizes. So there are different sizes and shapes of cards. I'm sure you can find that information on where what type of card sleeves you need online somewhere. Um, looking forward to trying out Draconis Invasion, the deck building game. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing. Now I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. All over the internet, Tabletop Bellhop, one word, includes social media and Facebook, Twitter, and all those fun places. Head to the webpage, tabletopbellhop.com, for lots of great gaming content. The other thing we do there is answer your gaming and game night questions. So if you do have a question for me, head there, click on Ask the Bellhop, or send an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. One more thing before you go, I just want to point out that we do have a Patreon at tabletopbellhop. Sorry, at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. And if you dig this video and like to see us keep making videos like this and keep improving our video quality, go back and watch our first unboxing and then watch this one. You'll see what I mean. Uh, please consider tipping your bellhop. That's it for me. Good night and game on.